Welcome to Mr. Hopkins English. This video will demonstrate how to apply the clear model of analysis. Now, have you ever been in a class where a teacher has asked you to analyze something and this just leaves you feeling a little confused? What does it really mean to analyze? Well, put simply, when we analyze, we break things down in order to bring out essential elements or structure. This is done by identifying cause and effect relationships, by making inferences and reaching conclusions about what is not said, or by explaining the impacts of the smaller parts of a system in relation to the whole. However, in language and literature, can we streamline this process and make it clear? Well, we can apply the, th uh, the clear model, which at its core has a three-tier approach. You might also hear this model referred to as level one, two, and three analysis. Now at the bottom of this pyramid, the largest part and the base, which will support everything after, is level one. What we do here is we explain how authorial choices achieve effects. In order to understand this, we have to first think about creation. Everything created has an author, and that author has used conscious and unconscious choices in order to create that work. This works for all different mediums, and the type of medium will dictate the choices available. For example, Shakespeare made choices when he wrote his poetry and plays. Van Gogh made choices when he painted. Martin Scorsese made his choices when he directed his films. And Stormzy makes choices when he makes his music. So, if we take Shakespeare for instance, we can look at a section of Hamlet and consider the various choices he consciously or unconsciously used. For example, here we can see he chose to use a metaphor. He also chose to use repetition. And he chose to use personification here. Also, here he chose to use the word puzzles instead of terms like confuses or bewilders. Shakespeare, as a playwright, will have linguistic or language choices because this is the medium he creates. Van Gogh, on the other hand, as a painter, will have different types of choices which will be distinctly visual. For instance, in Starry Night, we could look at his choice to paint the cathedral in the centre of the piece, or to put the cypress tree in the foreground, or to shape his brushstrokes in a way which looked like a wave. We could even look at his choice of colour. Alternatively, Martin Scorsese in his film Goodfellas made several choices in just this one shot. He chose the red lighting, and he also chose the low angle shot looking up at the character. He also chose the dark space where the scene took place. When creating a cultural artifact, be it a movie, novel, poem, poster or advertisement, every small detail in it is a choice. Some choices might be bigger and consciously done, but others might be much smaller or unconscious. It's our job to analyse by finding these choices and explaining how they create meaning via their effects. This is level one. So, as we approach a text with this new understanding that everything is a choice it's, and that those choices should be deconstructed and analysed, we can begin. As we read, we might identify several choices, but identification is not the same as analysis. So what do we do next? We need to ask ourselves what effects do these choices have? A choice might emphasise something, which is to say that this choice draws the reader's or viewer's attention to particular things. Or a choice could imply something, which is to say that it says something indirectly. Or a choice could evoke something, which means it causes the reader to think of something in particular or have a specific feeling. Now I like to limit myself to these three choices. And once we've identified the choice, we can start thinking about its effects. For example, a metaphor might imply something, dark dull colours might evoke something, and repetition might emphasise something. There is still, however, one more step to level one, justification. We need to explain exactly how that choice achieves this effect. Let's see an example. Over here, we have the front page of the Daily Express, a British tabloid newspaper. On it, there is the main headline, Migrants Swarm to Britain. The editor of the newspaper and the journalist who wrote the article have made particular choices which have certain effects and create meaning. So we have our text, the front page of the article at the Daily Express, and now we need to identify specific choices. Well, I think the diction of swarm is an important choice here. After, we can consider the effects that this choice has. Is the lexical choice of the diction of swarm to emphasize, to imply, or is it to evoke something? Well, I think it's to imply. Specifically, I believe that this choice is implying that migrants are a plague upon British society. 
At this point, I have my choice and specific effect. The choice of the diction of swarm and the effect that it implies that migrants are a plague on British society. I now need to justify why this is the case. Well, I think it is because the word swarm is associated with insects and destruction in addition to having biblical connotations. Now, as you can see, to do level one analysis correctly, there are three parts you need to include. There is the identification of the choice, specifically naming it as diction or lexical choice, then naming the effect using our effect language, and then finally justifying exactly how this is achieved. When we do in a level one analysis, we should not simply do one choice as well, but we'll look at different choices working together within our line of analysis. So I might also analyze the picture. There is a police officer in the foreground with migrants in the background. I could say that including the police evokes a feeling of suspicion, creating a negative portrayal of migrants in conjunction with the word swarm. This is really important because we can see how this paper is trying to manipulate the public and we can sort of deconstruct its xenophobic rhetoric. So that's level one. What about level two? Well, level two is supported by a level one base. And this means that we make connections between the authorial choices we, and their effects that we've talked about to the larger aspects of the text. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I want you to think of a check, a text. The authorial choices are things we're just going to see once in their context, a word, a metaphor in that particular paragraph, a particular brushstroke or camera shot used once. But these larger aspects are things which are seen throughout the text. There are characters or the depictions of people within the text. And when we look at characters, we think beyond the physical representation and think about their personalities, their routines, beliefs, attitudes, values, and judgments. We can think about the setting. And similarly, these are complex social and cultural places, and we can analyze the beliefs, hierarchies, and routines. We also have tone. And whenever we think about tone, we're thinking about the attitude of the speaker. What is the attitude of the speaker? Uh, towards a particular subject they're speaking or writing about. Usually this would be the author's attitude, but it can be a character's attitude as well. Next, we have mood. Now, mood is similar to tone as it's talking about feelings, but it's less to do with the feelings of the speaker and more to do with the feelings of the text and the reader and the viewer. It's the atmosphere we talk about. So a horror movie might have an eerie mood, whereas a comedy might have a light or funny one. Next, we have symbols. Whenever we're talking about symbols, we're talking about the ways an author represents abstract ideas. Moreover, we have narrative perspective. Narrative perspective is the perspective from which the story is told. This could be in terms of structure or point of view. Is it first person or third? Is it linear or not? Is it a frame narrative? We could talk about the reliability of the narrator themselves. Finally, we have the persuasion, communica uh, persuasive communication, and we have rhetorical appeals like logos, pathos, and ethos, appealing to logic, emotions, or trust. Now, as I said, these are things which appear throughout the text. They are aspects, not just in one tiny context, one tiny, at uh, one tiny point, but they're things you're going to see repeated. If level one is things that are used, then level two are things that are developed and created as a result. Now let's look at an example of this and how it relates to level one. We have a section from The Great Gatsby. As we're reading, we might think of level one and find this interesting choice here. The, the narrator says Tom Buchanan and his girl in reference to Myrtle. Well, you might say here the analysis of the possessive pronoun her suggests, which is another word for implies, that Myrtle belongs to Tom as it refers to her as a possession. Also, the lexical choice of girl emphasizes that she is of, a, uh, as, is of a lower status to Tom because of the connotations with children. As you can see here, we've looked at two choices in our level one and we've correctly identified the choice with their effect, justifying how meaning is made. Next, we need to think about how these choices develop larger aspects of the text. Here might be a good opportunity to talk about tone, the attitude towards the thing being talked about. We could say, that, as a result, a degrading tone is established towards Myrtle, as she's treated as not being worthy as Tom. When moving to level two, there are other important things to remember. The first is to start with a cause and effect transition, such as as a result. This is because level one causes level two. Next, we must remember to be specific. 
we don't just say tone, but we say the type of tone and what that, and what that tone is towards. Finally, we have to make sure there is a logical connection between level one and level two. Does the possessive pronoun of the diction of girl and their effects uh, create a degrading tone? Well, I would argue it absolutely does. So here you can see that with level two, the small details of the text help us with our analysis of the text as a whole. Now, a quick note, I might have also said that as, as a result of these choices at level one, at level two, there is a setting created wherein women are valued less than men. Or I might have said that Tommy's characterized as a more powerful and dominating character than Myrtle. There are several large aspects of the text from the small choices here. So that's level two, where we move from the smaller choices or parts into the text as a whole. At level three, we need to do something a little bit more significant to the top of the pyramid. We need to prove our claims by explaining the significance of our textual analysis. So we've analyzed the text in terms of the details and elements. Now we need to conclude with something significant about that. So when we're talking about the significant readings or interpretations of a text, we can choose from several lines or lenses of analysis. First, we can talk about representation. This is a really important lens where we look at how a text depicts gender or class, for instance, or represents certain communities of people. Is it a positive or negative representation, or does it capture a conflict between certain communities? Alternatively, we could look at the development of a big idea. The development of an idea would be the theme and message of a text. What message, for example, is conveyed about the theme of love or family? We could, instead, look at the text as a product of, uh, of its place in time and space and consider the historical context of a text. How does it reflect a particular period or event? Moving on, we could look at the text as either conforming to the genre or artistic movement or how it challenges it. Next, we could look at how the text portrays a particular global issue. How does the text portray a particular issue which exists for communities and individuals locally and globally? We can also think about the text as engaging with its target audience and if it does so effectively or not. And finally, we can consider the purpose of a text. Why was the text created and is the text effect effective at achieving its purpose? Does it persuade its audience to do something or effectively argue a point? Does it inform or simply entertain? Now let's look at an example with level three included. Let's say we've just read chapter four of William Golding's Lord of the Flies, a novel about a group of British schoolboys who, as a result of a fictional World War III, are stranded on an island and quickly descend into savagery. In the chapter, the antagonist Jack creates a war paint-like mask in order to hunt. Reading it, we can see a variety of choices at level one. Specifically, we could say the diction of slashed in red evokes images of knives due to the verb's connotations, whilst eye socket and jaw are examples of visual imagery which bring to mind images of skulls as their terms associated with them. The imagery of, of bloodthirsty snarling conjures images of wild predatory animals. One might note the metaphor in purple which implies that Jack has undergone a process of change in conjunction with the diction of awesome which emphasizes his new power. The metaphor in blue, which compares the mask as being something which shields Jack from shame, suggests that it has given him the ability to behave as he pleases without having to worry about what society might think. So based on these choices and the effects that they have, we might say at level two that Jack is characterized as being particularly violent and aggressive, and the mask has become a symbol which represents the true nature of mankind something he can use to be violent without worry of the consequences. At level three then, I might talk about the development of a big idea. I'll consider the theme of uh, human nature, and I might sp say specifically that Golding explores the theme of human nature, saying that he conveying the idea that mankind is innately violent and that without rules to shame people, people become much more violent and act on their true human nature. So as you can see, there are some th specific things happening here as well, just like level two. It begins with a cause and effect of transition in order to demonstrate the relationship between my earlier analysis and this final conclusion. We can also see that we've made this connection to the development of an idea. 
something specific and something significant. And then we've expanded on that to concretely and explicitly say the message that's got across. And most importantly, as always, there is a logical connection between level two and level three. So that's our method. We have the three levels of analysis. At level one, there's the small details and the author's choices, which are identified along with their effects, which are clearly justified. At level two, we consider how such choices and effects impact and create the text as a whole. And finally, at level three, we explain the significance of the text. Let's pull those apart a little bit just to check the criteria at each level. At level one, what are we doing? Well, we're explaining how authorial choices achieve effects. We do this by accurately identifying the authorial choice. We have done this if we are specific about what the author has done. If they use the metaphor, we state this. If it's a particular camera angle, we mention this. We do not just say, the quote shows. Next, we need to identify the choice, the effect. Does it imply something, evoke something, or emphasize something? We must again be specific and state what is implied, evoked, or em uh, emphasized. Don't forget all of these terms have their synonyms so we don't need to be repetitive in our analysis. Finally, we explain and justify how these choices achieve their effects. And this will be indicated with terms like because, by, through, as, or via. Next, at level two, we make connections between the authorial choices and larger aspects of the text. This might include character, setting, tone, mood, symbol, narrative, respective, or rhetorical appeal. We've done this if we begin with a cause and effect transition word. We need to do this as we use language to highlight the connection between level one and level two. We need to comment specifically on the impact of a particular aspect. We can't just say a character is characterized, but we must be specific and say how they are characterized. And finally, we need to have a logical relationship with what we have said at level one. If, for example, you've said visual imagery emphasizes a character's gluttony, it would make no sense to say they are characterized as someone who is kind. And finally, we have level three. Here, we have arrived at a logical conclusion and get the chance to prove something significant based on our analysis. Here we can consider the development of an idea, representation, historical context, genre, artistic movement, global issue, audience, or purpose. It should be noted that you would only pick one of these things when you're either writing in analysis or presenting analysis. Although when you're reading, you might read with several in mind. To do this correctly, we need to show the relationship to our early, earlier analysis by including a cause and effect transition word. We also need to have a logical relationship with our level two. For example, we can't just say that a character is portrayed as being frugal and stingy with money, then say the text explores the theme of love. Finally, we need to say something specific about the topic of our analysis. This might mean explaining the message about a particular theme or commenting whether the representation of a group is positive or negative and why, or judging the efficacy of the text purpose or relationship with the intended audience. Another way to conceptualize this model is to think about zooming in and then zooming out. So at level one, at the base of the pyramid, we are closest to the ground. We have a magnifying glass where we are only able to see and discuss the very specific details of the text. We're like an investigator. We have our heads pushed into it, examining the smallest details. At level two, we zoom out a little. We have our reading glasses on where we see the text as a whole. And then at level three, we get our binoculars and we look for connections beyond the text, seeing how it connects with the world outside, looking at culture, history, or other broader ideas. Now, some of you might be thinking that this model seems pretty difficult and might only be applied at the diploma levels or the A-level years. But let's just see an example for a story I'm sure you're all aware of from your childhood and just prove that it's a great entry point for any text at any level we'll use the three little pigs. Again, looking at the pyramid, at level one, we're looking for the smaller choices and their effects. Perhaps in this story, we can see the first pig deciding to use straw as a choice. We might say that the use of straw has weak connotations as it can be easily broken, emphasizing the short-sightedness of the first pig. Moving to level two, we still need to connect this to the larger aspects of the text as a whole, and so characterization here would make the most sense. We might say that as a result of 
the connotations with straw, the pig is characterized as lazy, careless, and as one who seeks shortcuts for choosing to build his house with this. Finally, at level three, we need to discuss the significance of this analysis and explain its broader connections to a large idea. I'll use the development of a particular theme. Specifically, I could say that, therefore, as a consequence of his house being easily blown down, the text explores the theme of hard work. Specifically, it conveys the message that taking shortcuts can result in ruin. And this is how one might apply the model with the story as simple as the three little pigs. So remember, when we analyze, we're moving for a structure that moves in three steps. We're looking at the small details, the author's choices and their effects. Then we look at the text as a whole, and finally saying something about how the aspects in the text relate to things beyond the text itself, something bigger than it. And we're very specific in explaining this. We have to think about the author's choices and their effects, particularly whether a choice emphasizes, implies, or evokes something in particular. We have to make connections with those things and look at aspects of the text, such as character, setting, tone, mood, symbolism, perspective, or appeal. And finally, we have to connect those things to something significant, and we have to make sure that all of these things align and that there is a logical connection between them all.